Hey everybody, this is Crystal with Crystal Diversity Creations. And so I asked um, after I shared a wine glass whether or not you were interested in learning how to make them. This is actually one that I made on Sunday. Um, and then the other one that I had had epoxy. So um, you guys said that you wanted to learn how to do that. So I'm going to show you. I'm actually I'm about to start two glasses the one um, glass is going to be orange and black, and the other one is going to be green and gold. And they said they wanted like a money green. So I'm trying to kind of come up with a um, glitter color. So this is what I, sometimes I'll just mix them. So this was the orange, and this is kind of like a pretty bright um, orange. And this one is, I like all the sparkles that's in it. So I kind of mixed those two together. And this is how I got um, this color here. So this is what I'm going to use for the one that's going to be orange and black. And I'm going to do two layers of, um, of the orange on that one. This is the color that I came up with for the um, money green okay and so this is actually a combination of these two so it's this one with this darker one and again i like the sparkles um that the two make combined i'm going to use uh just some um mod podge to um put over the glass to have the um glitter adhere to it so i'll do two coats and basically what I do to prep the glass is the same that I do basically with um, whether I'm doing sublimation or anything. I always start with um, wiping the glass down just to make sure that you get uh, um, any fingerprints and all like that off of your glass. Um, if you're doing uh, any kind of glass mugs, anything, I always just wipe it down really well. And then this way, you know, uh, make sure that your mind's product is adhering well and um, everything. So I always... Do that, and I'll take the tack off of there. I always um, wipe down the glasses, and then basically when you're going to do your mod podge, um, you're doing like even strokes, an even layer. So I'll do one coat so that you can see it, but I won't bore you with doing it all. I'll just do it real, real progressing um, through it. So, about to shake up your mod podge. And I just used the lid because I'll wipe it with a baby wipe afterwards. With a V in the front, I almost forgot to put the V down. So that's where, that's where that one is. And we're really looking at the outer part of it. Okay, because that's what you're going to be left with. And so that's good there. And then what you can do. And come back in here. I'm going to get rid of this part here. Sometimes it works out where you don't have to do that and you can just overlap them, but don't make it harder than it needs to be. So this one is here. And then this one is going to be right there to give us that V. Like that. And just make sure that it's smooth. And I just run my nail over any lumps. Because you don't want any glue or anything going in there. And then that piece that I had previously taken off, I can now place that right here in the middle because we want to cover it all the way up so that when we go to do 
the um, epoxy. Uh, nothing is getting in the middle of there. So that's it. And that's how it'll look. And then we'll do the other one the same way. And you just want to make sure that that looks good to you. How to get your Mod Podge. And the reason why we catch with the other one is because we'll just rotate from one to the other. is why I didn't want it super long. We bring this one over. And now we use this. And then when we go over, we'll catch any place that we didn't get good coverage. A lighter color like this may take three coats. So we just wait and see. Okay. So we leave this. And this is what we have so far. 
we tap, tap, tap to just shake off any excess. And then this one is just waiting. And then I'll go ahead and do the other one. So this is what we have so far. Then I'll do the other one. And then I'll come back by then that'll be ready for its second coat. And then I'll do that second coat. And I'll show you the spray that I'm actually um the spray that I'm gonna use. It's a it's a glitter spray. It's nothing fancy. You can use um what is it, the Maj Paj spray or whatever, but this spray is actually really good and it doesn't um it doesn't dull your glitter. That's what I really like about it. But if you don't have that and you have the um, Maj Paj spray, you can use that. If you don't have no spray, you just leave it and wait till it's really good and dry so that you don't pick up that much glitter. And I would say it's good and dry in about maybe 20 minutes. By the time I do that one, I'll be able to go ahead and spray this one. If I didn't have any spray, I'll leave it just a little bit longer but the spray isn't mandatory it just helps the process i mean people do more with less every day but if you got it you might as well use it and we just you know when you're going to give somebody something you want to put your best foot forward with it but like i said with this one here this is gonna be nice i'm gonna do the gold so you see the gold from inside of here and then i'm gonna do the green on the outside or maybe i just do it all green i think i'm gonna just do it all green because i was just thinking i'm not 100 percent sure that this is the exact gold of the tool and then i don't really want two different colored golds so i think i will actually do it green and then i'll do the gold tool and i think i'll do the name in gold or i'll use gold for the bling one of the two so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I will actually speed up the video as we do this. So this is the spray that I use to um, spray after each coat of glitter. But you can also use this and it'll seal it just as well. And this is easy to find. Um, this one can be a little bit challenging to find. Sometimes it's at um, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, but sometimes it's something you may have to order online. But this is always available, even in like Michael's or Joanne's and works just as good actually. So, you basically, I mean, it's such a quick spray. It ain't something you really got to take outside unless you just sensitive and you're just spraying it really quickly. That's it. And then let it sit for maybe like four or five minutes. And I usually just turn on my fan so that, you know, it get a little ventilation, but you leave it for maybe like four or five minutes. And then you can go ahead and add your next layer. And then after that, I'll um, leave it without spraying it until tomorrow. And then I'll spray it, let it sit for four or five minutes, and then go ahead and add the epoxy. So we'll do that together tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same steps um, for each of these glasses. Okay. Um, so make sure you always keep some baby wipes available because they just do really well with epoxy, Maj Paj, and everything. 
I wanted to show you this really quickly. Um, I don't know if you can see inside of there, but where it's still white at in there, that lets you know that that glue isn't ready. That's why I leave it sit overnight. But both are ready. And you want to always make sure that you're mindful about um, the tops of the glasses that you get the full coverage and around here that you're getting full coverage. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and I'll finish with these glasses. So what I've done so far is just pulled the tape up so that I can put the foam in. I put the foam in the other one. Now I'm just putting it in this one here. And that's just a matter of squeezing it and sticking it in there like that. Make sure that this blue tape is up because you'll be taking this off about 20 minutes into the process. You'll be removing this. So you wanna make sure that it's accessible. So that's why I kind of got it like that. The other one is already prepped. Um, each of these on the turn. And then I just put this cardboard underneath of it just so if any epoxy falls, it's falling on this board. And I have a um I have a mat here on the cardboard. So this is just sitting up off the floor. So it just gives us some spinning space. And then um I'm using Envirotech. This comes from a uh, Michaels. And the first coat is just so that you actually um are getting a coat over the glass so that's the only goal of the first coat the second coat is when you want to make sure that you have excellent coverage but the first coat is just to give it you know just something to hold it together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to spray it one more time with this and then i'm going to make the um, epoxy while it's spinning off so i'm turning them on so um, I got them spinning and basically I'm just going to spray them. This is just so that when I go to seal them with the epoxy, I'm not grabbing a whole bunch of glitter. So that's the only purpose of that. And you see how nice it stays. Um, I'm going to grab some gloves. So, um, basically for the two glasses uh, make sure you got your gloves make sure you got a mask i always use a mask because you'll see bubbles when you're stirring it bubbles start to fly up and that's what i'm always most concerned that they're getting up in your nose or what have you so you want to be mindful of that um i'm gonna fill this up to about 20 I'm gonna do 20 of each. And if it helps, you can just get a marker and mark off the line so you know where your 20 is. If you're afraid you're gonna overfill it. And then whichever one I already used, I always just sit that out of the way because it's so hard to tell the difference between the two. And then um, you can also take these And if you ship, you can use your scale. And put it on your scale. I put a piece of paper down first, though. But put it on your scale. 
and that'll help you to make sure that you've weighed out the same amount. This one is 0.6, so I can go ahead and add just like a little dot to it. Um, or if I would have used it just like that, it really would have been okay. But I'll just go ahead and add just a little dot. Okay. Hey everybody, we're back to do the wine glasses, finish them up, put the epoxy on them. So, so far, I've sprayed them with the spray that we used last night. And I have 20 ounces of both of the um, epoxies, the hardener, and then the other one. Um, and this is the EnviroTech Light. I get those from uh, Michaels and also on Amazon. And I took each of these and put them on the scale, but I used a um, piece of paper on the scale so that I didn't get any on my scale. And now, what I'm going to do, um, I have gloves, I have a mask, because as you start to stir the epoxy, you want to make certain that those bubbles aren't going up in your nose. As far as prepping the glasses, I made sure that the blue tape on the glasses um, were peeled back, so that that way I would be able to remove the tape when I need to. So I pulled it up so that that way, once it's about 20 minutes into the process, after I put the epoxy on, I will remove that and expose the glass. And when I go to do the second one, I'll put more blue tape on it and then do the same thing, remove it after the 20 minutes. So this is where we are in the process right now. And I'm going to go ahead and mix these two. Oops. So I just dumped this into a larger container just so that I would be able to have some space to stir it. That's all. And you're just scraping to make sure that you get it all because remember we weighed this to make sure that we had the um, fullness. And then you're going to stir this for about maybe four or five minutes. And then midway through the stir, what I typically do is I hit it with a little bit of the um, heat from the heat gun. Just to help thin it out. And you're just constantly scraping the sides. And so I'll do this, I'll fast forward through. Okay, so I've been stirring this for about maybe four and a half minutes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start to, um, apply it and so the way i do it is i just put a little bit on and then i just take my finger and carefully pat it on up over there you don't want too much at one time because you want to control where it's going. And you can't do that if it's so much coming out. And you want to go up to like the lip of the, the um, glass. And you just let the movement of the turner help you guide you where you're going. You're looking for any space where there isn't any epoxy yet and that's where you want to focus your attention
you can see as the colors darken that that's where you know the epoxy has already been applied then you want to get up at the top and kind of run your fingers right around that top again at this point we're just looking to ensure that we cover the entire glass the second round will be when we make sure that we get like a nice thick coverage here we just kind of running it down sometimes you gotta work a little faster than others and you want to make sure that you're getting all in this space right here Now you kind of focus on the V and you just make sure you're kind of bringing your finger around straight so that you can know. I started here. If I do this all the way till I get back to that V, I know I've got full coverage coming down. Hit the top. Full coverage. Okay. Now we're going to do the stem. Focusing on the stem. You can pick a little bit of that up if you need to. When your epoxy starts getting a little bit warm, you know your time is running out. And you need to be moving a little bit faster. The more you hit it with a heat gun, the faster you need to move. Same thing. Just make sure you come all the way around. If you come all the way around, you know you got it. You shouldn't feel like no roughness. Then you want to go all the way around this. Make sure you got that. And then that's it. So this one is really just waiting. And we'll let this go for about 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 minutes. And once this runs its full 20 minutes, we'll take that blue tape um, off. over to the green one.
sure we have full coverage out there now. So basically, that's it. They're just going to um, go for the 20 minutes. And then after that, come back over and remove the tape. So I set a timer because if it's too um, little time, it'll, um, it'll just keep moving. The um, epoxy keep moving. And if it's too long, it'll be hard to get it up. Um, so. so you want to be right in that sweet spot. So that's what we have for now. And then I just kind of put all of this in here like this. And then I grab it and I put it in there, get the other hand, and there you have it. And then this is just ready to go in the trash. Okay, so we'll leave this for 20 minutes. Um, when the 20 minutes is up, I will come back and take the tape off. I'll show you how to do one of those and um, six hours it'll spin. And then after the six hours, we'll put another coat on six more hours. And after we take this tape off and after it spins for six hours, we will add the bling, add more tape. And then another coat of epoxy. When it's done, we'll be ready to add the name and the tool. All right. See you in a bit. Okay. So it's been 20 minutes. And we're back to take the tape off. And I'm just slowing this down so that um, I can get it towards the front. So basically, you just want to carefully pull the tape. And don't worry, I mean, sometimes it will want to Stay down, just do your best to make it come up nicely. You can clean that up with a um, blade, so don't overthink it. Off. We'll clean this. Don't worry about that. And get the other one. Same process. That one was nicer to us. And then that's it. Now, 
it'll just spin for six hours and that's it so when we meet again we'll be putting the bling on well we'll clean up and then we'll put the um the blank on and um we'll um add more tape and then do another layer okay and that'll be that see you in about six hours hey everybody okay i'm back i'm gonna do this um green tumbler because i need to get this one done by the weekend so they're both dry they've dried overnight so basically what i'm doing right now is just going to try to clean this up so i just where there's extra that needs to come off i cut it with the blade and then just remove the excess just to straighten out the line. So that's that. Then right here, it's a little bit off. And I'm pressing hard, be careful. And then you just kind of remove it. That's why it's best that it be extremely dry. coming down against it really hard and steady then you just go back up and just remove the excess just kind of putting the blade underneath the excess and it'll remove it Scrape off anything that's left. So if you can see right here, it's a little bit left. You want to just do that all the way down, just so that you have a clean edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as perfect as you can get it. Like you don't want to leave any um, swerves or anything like that, like we just had there. So even if it gives the illusion that it's straight. So see, now it looks straight. This side wasn't too bad at all. So we just need to get right there. Move this again, come in, straighten out. Like you basically visualize the line, if you will. Um, and wherever you, you know, see the straightness could occur, you go ahead and straighten it out. Give it smooth. Get it over here, towards the end. Again, straighten it out. Remove the excess carefully. And I've got a tight hold on this glass. So, keep doing that like that. And then that's what we have so far. Then we'll go ahead and get it down. So you're just feeling for any rough edges. I like the sand and block that they have at the um at the Dollar Tree. It's just easier to control for me than the sandpaper. You want to sand this edge as well. So that when you put your next coating of epoxy on. It, again, gives the appearance that it's flat. So, sand that down really good. You want to sand. If you were doing a whole glass or a whole tumbler, I like to do like this. So, that way, it's going to be nice and smooth around the rim. And then just go over the whole glass. 
here. Remember, we're putting tool on this so you don't over worry about the stem because it's going to have a tool on it. Um, anyhow, do your bottom. Get up here. Okay. Feel. Feel it. Should be smooth. If you feel any rough spots, go on and hit them again. Should be smooth. If it's smooth now, when you put your last coat of epoxy, you'll be done. There we have it. That's good. Now, let me see. Um, you then want to um, spray some alcohol and clean it up. Get rid of any other um, dust that will have Got Nornia, shine it up as best as you can. Okay, so now this is going to be a gold and um, green. So I went with the gold. I love some bling because it just feels like it kind of makes it look pretty. I want to um, get in here and using my little blade just to knock off any excess because I want to make sure that I have a a good um a good seal when I put that on there get in here good and clean this up before we put our little um, bling on here and so what I basically do is I make sure that when I'm doing the bling I am putting it as close to the um, epoxy as possible so I butt it right up against there okay like that. This is adhesive, so it makes it easier. I find a natural space to stop it, smooth it down, right? So for me, it's going to be right here where this circle fits into this space so nicely. Dusty, that's my cat. He got a song in his heart. Okay. So now that stops it right into that space. And I could use this, but I might as well, because clearly it's not going to make it to the end, pick up a new one. So that way I don't have to try to match the two pieces together. So then I go back in this um in this corner here 
And I line that one up with that. And then I just repeat the process. Get it all the way down. Okay, see where it makes sense to stop it. Here, I feel like we can get rid of this and leave it like that. Okay. that down a little bit closer because as long as it's buttoned up it looks straight you know and then just kind of run your finger over it to get a good secure fit um you don't want it so far like so this one is nice that it comes up this one we're not going to be able to do anything with because that circle is too big to fit there like it's going to come up off the side so we don't want that there so we'll just leave it like that and that's fine um that's good the way that it is and then we'll go ahead and um tape it up It's easier to see where to tape it now because we have a guide, but we want to get it where the tape has a little bit of space so that the epoxy can settle in and make a good seal, but it should still be fairly close. So that's about good right there. That's going to give us just a little lip for our epoxy. I can actually make that. A little bit closer because I like mine close. Just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. So now that's going to give us a good seal. And we'll do um, the other side. Trying to get in there. Good. So our concern is about the point here. So we just want to make sure that that point is defined. Put that there and make sure that it lines up with the other side, which it does. So we have a good point in there with our tape. And then I want this to come up just a tad bit more and use this little tape here just to kind of Line that like so, and then I just need one more piece for the middle. And this is pretty much ready to go. And it already has, I didn't take that out out of the center, so that's all set. same process um, for the epoxy that we did before so I won't go over that but you're just gonna come over this just like it was regular glass and seal it wait your 20 minutes and then move on with the process so um, when we come back after this dries for six hours then I'll show you how to get the um, get it cleaned up and get the name on it okay I actually wanted to come back so that you could see how I straighten this one up in case yours comes out like this. Again, you find where it looks like you can make a line on it. So I just came down like that. 
Come back over that line. Hold the glass securely. Control the knife. Remove the excess. So I'm going to kind of straighten this a bit to go into that line. Good. See, it's coming straight. And then we're going to do here. I have to go over it one more time. So that way we know we got a good clean cut coming into the V. And I just want to go back in there. just go back in and clean that up but now you can see that it's straight and it's ready to get the same sanding process and the bling and the tape like the other one I, I just figured I'd show you this because I wanted to let you know that it doesn't matter how jacked up it is you can fix it and then also because I didn't have enough time to do the epoxy on the other one so I figured I'd go ahead and do this and then when I epoxy I'll be able to epoxy both at one time all right back. hey i'm back with the final um coat i actually changed these beads on the green one because i wasn't that crazy with the color once i seen it up against the um tool that i plan to use so i changed it in here same concept except you go over your beads, your bling. 
that same concept and you're being a little bit more generous because this is the final coat again you want to get up here at the top And you're bringing down your excess. Because you don't want a whole bunch just laying up there. So you're bringing down your excess and using that on the rest of the glass. Rub over your brunelling. So that gets sealed in there and won't go nowhere. Every opportunity, try to get a little bit up there. Just keep on going around. Start to come down. Well, at the middle point, we're going to start to come all the way down. Keep coming down. Smooth all the way down. So this way we know we've gotten the whole glass. We don't need to really put no more on here. We're just using what we have to kind of get it around. Now we can just go back, just for safe measure. Make sure we got everything. You don't see any like running. It shouldn't be running on the glass. Or anything like that. It should just be a very light coat. And that'll dry really nice and pretty. And you will be done. It shouldn't be running. Go back. And if it's too much, smooth it off. Take it off. You want coverage, but you don't want it dripping.
And then if you were doing, um, if you were actually doing, um, key change or something, you would actually lightly hit this with some to get your bubbles up. Just enough to get your bubbles up the top. And you can also do the same thing, a one favor on your ass, just to get any bubbles up. Again, we started right near the back, so you just start in that same spot. We started at the V. We started at the V, so you just kind of... I want to see you do that for the day. And I got this one left. And that's it. And you just leave it. Come back at 15 minutes and take the cake off the same like we did before. Welcome back. So we're finally on the tail end of this video. So these things you can see, they take some time. Um, so we actually, um, I just got the glasses off of the turner. This is what we have so far. And this is the green one. So this one will get this color tool. And it's the this is from Michaels. It's the glitter tool. And then this um, orange one will get the black. And then these are actually just the um, what we made with the extra. And then I put some... Um, of the inks in it and just kind of swirled it so these are little keychains that's why you just don't waste it you can make something out of it and i got i wound up getting um two i was able to get two out of it so here's the other one so you can put a little key ring on that give it to somebody um sometimes if you um have like extra of your glitter you can stick that in there and you can give that away as well and then oh speaking of the extra glitter i just put the the ones that i mixed in the bag so that you know if you want to make a glass or you want to get to that color again you have it or you can use it for something extra so that was the remainder of that so now we're going to work with the green one because this one is due first so just first want to get uh, insert out okay so that wasn't too bad and we'll have to clean up this here and again that's just um using the the blade i said i had to it over here but that's just using the blade we'll clean that up and then we'll put a name over this and i like the um Yesy font. That's where you get the heart with the words. So I like the Yesy font. And then um, we're going to cut maybe like 25, 26, the even number. So like about 26 of these circles. And the circle is basically um, 5 by 7 by 2 inches. And then it, you do it on the fold and then you have a circle. So you cut them on the fold and I'll show you how to do that. It's like 25 or 26 of them. Okay, so I went and got the um, blade. And so basically you have to um, go in to clean off the X, any extra stuff that's on here. You're just scraping it off.
any of the excess because you're going to have some epoxy that might have seeped over. You just want to get that off. And try as much as you can is to stay on top of the epoxy because you can scratch the glass. And then once you get it all nice and cleaned up, you're just going to wipe it down with some alcohol. good and you can tell because you'll be able to run your blade and you shouldn't get any um thing that wants to pull your blade you should just get a smooth slide across it and you know you got everything and then here i'm just gonna kind of clean in this corner you see a little bit of the epoxy came down so I'm just gonna straighten that not close because you don't want to break the seal you just want to get rid of the excess So now, um, we're just about ready to get started. We'll turn on the um, heat gun. Well, let that be getting warm while we're cutting out the circles. So I'm gonna cut one, and then after I get the one cut, I'll put it into fast forward, I mean, a, a faster mode so that that way it is shorten the video. And usually it's about the whole one of these, maybe give or take a little bit, but 
you about need a whole one of these rolls for a glass. And so the way it goes, you have the measurements um, for the circle. If you fold your circle in half, you should be from 5.75 inches and then going up to the center should be two inches. And then if you fold it, um, when you when you cut it, you'll fold it on the um, line and cut it that way. But when you're um, making it, you wanna first make sure that, um, you wanna mm -hmm. make, first make sure that your whole circle will fit before you start folding it. So then, once you know that that's gonna work, you can go ahead and just start folding it in half. So then you just keep folding it. So pretty. Um, And that's all you want to do. You just keep folding it in half and folding it in half. And um, I maybe do like six or seven, ten, whatever. And then once you folded it so many times, you'll go ahead and um, do your cut. So I'm going to just go ahead and stop here so that we can do the cut. And then I'll fast forward through the rest. I use a um, rotary blade and a um, cut mat. So I have them like this. I fold it in half again. I fold my template in half and then I put that on the fold. Then basically I set this in the center, press hard, and come on around. Okay. And um, you can certainly do that with scissors as well. It's just easier with the um, <clears throat> with the rotary. And then when you <clears throat> open it up, you have your circles. <clears throat> the circles are used to apply it to the um, to the glass stem, and they get they get folded in half, and then down to a quarter, and then they get glued on like this. So we'll do that shortly. But I'm gonna kind of go ahead and um, cut up this whole batch. And then we'll move to the next part. Okay, so we have all of our um, all of our circles cut. Now we're just gonna hang the glass a little bit. This is just alcohol. Again, um, put my little stand for my glue. I like to do them in twos, it just makes it go a little faster. 
So, you'll have your um, two pieces of tool. Put it together, fold them in half, fold it into a quarter. Gonna just put it right up against the stem and put some glue. And you're just gonna leave it there till it till it um adheres a little bit. The first couple you need to hold a little longer because they don't have anything to lean up against. down into the quarter and they're going to be close together I like to do a little bit in the middle then kind of push it with my nozzle tip over so that they're close together that's what makes it pretty when there's a lot of them I guess like not a don't be chintzy on it that's why we cut so many circles Because you do need a lot. And then you're just going to continue this until you get it filled. Some people just like it with a little bit down the bottom. Or you can do two rows. Or you can go all the way up. It just really is personal preference. Um, so I'm going to continue to do that. And then we'll check back in. Okay, so this is how you what you have after the first layer. So if you want to stop here, you can. Um, this is just um, one variation of the glass. So you can stop here and you can go ahead and put your name on and you just fluff these so that they, you know, sit the way you want them to. And then sometimes you can put a little bit of um, hot glue and put a little of the... Um, round glitters in there so you can do that if you want to just fill it up so when you look in it looks a little pretty you can put the like the uh, white iridescence to match these um so that's totally up to you um i'm gonna actually add one more layer to get it up to about here and um then i'll stop and then i'll go ahead and add the name so i'll be back i'm gonna finish doing that
Okay, so this is finished. Um, this is how this one will look. I'm gonna go back and any little phrase of glue, strings of glue you have, you wanna grab them off of there. But that is it. We'll go ahead and um, get the name printed this is, uh, for Linda. So we'll get the name printed and put that on here and um, finish cleaning it up one last little bit. And then that'll finalize that one. Um, I'm trying to see if I have time to do the other one, but I'm gonna do the other one today as well. Put the name on it and then go ahead and complete this, okay? So you seen how it looks with one layer of the tool and this is how it is with two. I just think the two just looks so full and so pretty. And then they're just gonna grab it right around the base of that glass like that. And it just is something to make them feel special. That special birthday. I do a lot of these for like your um, 50th, 60th, any of those whole numbers like that. But I just love them. I think they're just so pretty and makes the birthday person feel so special. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get the name printed. I print the name on Cricut and um, it's the Yesi font. Okay, so I'll print that and be right back. And then, oh, you're just going to measure based on your name. You'll just measure from here to here to see um, how large you can make the name because um, a name like D, which is only three letters, is going to be larger than um, Linda, which is five letters. So um, you just look to see how much space you have and then you size it when you're in Cricut. Okay. And then I usually do like a little swirl. So I'll allow for the space to come in here as well. Alrighty. Okay, so this is the last bit of it. I've printed out my um, name, Linda, um, in the Yessie font. And I kind of got it aligned the way that I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put it on using my um, mini Cricut Press. So I also, where's my tape? I like to tape it down a little bit so that if it shifts or anything, it's no big deal. Okay, so just add a little bit of pressure, not much, keep it moving a little bit, don't leave it totally sitting on it. Try not to hit the gems because it will like singe them a little bit. So go use the point, get in there, get out. Um, keep going. Again, be careful about the gems. And then you can just leave it on there for about 10 seconds. 10 seconds, moving it over. Okay. Again, putting a little bit of pressure, not much, just so that it can go ahead and adhere. And then you want to pay attention when you're lifting it up to make sure that it's not pulling up. If it's pulling up, hit it back with some more heat till it's all on there and staying down. So as you can see, this is a tedious process. This whole glass is, and that's why you should be making a generous profit off of these glasses because it's a lot of time and steps that are required for them to come out nice. It requires a lot of attention for these glasses. So now, we wanna just, um, you wanna look up underneath of it, lift it carefully and see, see that was just moving. So we go back and we hit that for a second. So it was the top of the L that was moving. So we go back looking on the side 
lifting the paper, making sure that when you're lifting the paper up, are the letters moving? If they're moving, you go back and you hit them. Add a little more heat. I couldn't quite see with that, so I'm gonna just add some heat right here just because. It came up too fast for me to really pay attention. Now I'm just going back over the whole thing. Just for good measure. And that's it. Um, run your finger over it to see is anything moving. Should not be. Hit the A. I don't like to do it without the paper. The tip of that A was moving. And this is heat transfer vinyl, so it's automatically able to withstand in water. It automatically makes it permanent. All right, so that's good. So there you have it. Um, I'll put a final post when I sit her over on the stand. Um, but this is it. And again, it is a lot of work, but the reward is great. Um, it does look very elegant, very pretty. Um, but you should certainly, um, once you get to the point where you're selling them, they should sell for a generous amount of money because they are very time consuming. Um, we've done this video over a course of, I think, three or four days so just going back and tending to it I don't care if it's only a little bit but it's like you're putting the tape on you're taking the tape off you're epoxying it you're glittering it you're adding the, it's a whole bunch so I mean this is not a, a um, $15 glass this is not a $20 glass um, I sell these glasses anywhere from um, $35 $40 a glass so um, and it just depends on what or how simple or how complicated um, they are. Because as you can see, they are time consuming. So I hope this helps. I hope this answered your questions. If you have additional questions, please feel free to um, send me a message. Go ahead and put something down in the comments. Um, if you haven't already, please like or subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.